to say on some, it either is like maybe something simple like to do with going out on the road to Google Drive or like a preview of like your plot or something. And then they, so every two different two different videos and then they just do that. And then they just put all their, sort all their website. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, he is the creator of Ditch That Textbook, which obviously looks like he's going to talk a bit about that. <laughs> um, and he's been infusing his technology and innovative learning into his classroom for over 10 years. So with that, you're welcome. Happy Thank you for having me. It always kind of scares me to death to present right at one o'clock because you guys just got done with lunch. <laughs> so everybody's got their stomachs full and like you come in and you settle in. And if the room's a little bit warm, it's like what are you going to do to try to stay awake? But I've got a whole bunch of ideas that you can use in your class and some examples that I can show you right up here. Um, so my hope is that if I keep throwing you different ideas enough that maybe you haven't heard of or different twists on them, and maybe you guys will be, you know, engaged and focused, and hopefully you'll find a lot of a lot of use out of this. So, um, so today's resources, everything I talk about, every pretty much every link that um, I can take you to, is all going to come right off of this page. And so, if you've got a device and you want to head up there to ditch that textbook.com/video projects, that'll take you to this page, and it's going to have basically all of the projects that, I can, that I'm going to be talking about. So if you want to kind of scan ahead a little bit, you can. Um, if you want to hang on to that, that specific URL, that's fine. This page is not going anywhere. So all of the ideas that are on here, they're all going to stay. So if you want to bookmark it, if you want to write it down or save it someplace, then definitely feel free to do that. I have something free for all of you. I don't want to show you. Oh, I said that word, didn't I? I said the free word. <laughs> okay. okay, so if you look, this is, this is my site. Um, and this is on any page on my site. If you're not familiar with my, my blog, I blog there generally on Monday and Thursday about, um, it's like technology use, like meaningful ways that you can use technology and creative teaching and just different stuff like that. Um, I've been doing this for about three years, so I also have a book available here and on Amazon. Um, so, anyway, that's that's where all of this is, and the, the free stuff that I mentioned earlier. If you scroll down here and you look on the right, I have a free book that you can download if you haven't already. If you saw me earlier, you may have already gotten this. And so, anywhere on my site, you can um, you can find us. It's called 101 Practical Ways to Ditch That Textbook. So this was just basically a huge brainstorm of ways that I can incorporate technology, creativity, and student choice, just all sorts of different stuff into the class. It's got links, it's got screenshots, icons, just all sorts of stuff. If you're interested in getting it, which is different than this book, then you can scroll right down here, put your email address in there and your name, and hit the red button, and it will send it directly into your inbox. And the PDF file, you can open it on a laptop, on a tablet, on a smartphone, and read it from pretty much anywhere. Um, sometimes people will print it out, so any of that's okay. okay. That'll also subscribe you to my email newsletters, which come out twice a week. Uh, it's got lots of good ideas on how to use technology. I do lots of stuff on Google, but not specifically Google, and just different ways of thinking about education. So, um, does anybody? This is a little bit of a shot in the dark. I've never tried this before. Does anybody get the emails from my uh, from my blog to you? Okay. And then when the rest of you subscribe, you <coughs> my favorite. Never get next to life. So, okay. So we're here to talk about video projects, right? Okay. Curious to get started. Um, how many of you have a one-to-one -one program at your school? Good. Hands down. Um, how many of you have laptops and or Chromebooks available to your students in some way, whether it's one-to-one -one or not? Okay, lots of laptops and Chromebooks. That's great. That's what my students have all worked with a lot. How many of you are at iPad school? Lots of iPads at your school. Awesome. And the thing I love, love, love about iPads is how built for creating video and images that they are. And so a lot of this stuff will fit just super well. And the beauty of a lot of this is that even if you don't have a bunch of devices, there's so much you can do with video. Because you know as well as I do that even all the way down into elementary school, kids walk into class with these powerful devices that create better videos than we could 10 years ago with sophisticated video equipment, am I right? Yeah, so being able to tap into that sometimes is, is a really neat thing. So I wanna show you just a ton of different ideas 
of how you can bring video into class in different different ways. There will be some different tools, some different techniques, and that kind of thing. And I've got several examples that I can show you too. While I'm talking, I want you to be thinking, if you would, about what are some video projects that you've done. And then when I get wrapped up, hopefully I'll get wrapped up. For a little bit. <laughs> And I want to hear what you guys are doing too. If all you get is just one brain's worth of video projects, then you're missing out on all of this. And so I'm sure there's lots of other good stuff out here. This is not an exhaustive list. These are just things that I've tried or I've kind of checked out and that I, I think are good. And the way I've got it arranged is we're going from simple videos. This is like this is kind of like levels in a game. Okay, so we're going to like progressively get get kind of like easier and easier, so to speak. So these are the real basic ones, and then we'll move on down. Okay, ready to get started? All right, so the first one are simple camera videos. And what I mean by that is that's just as simple as grab your phone, grab your iPad, um, you know, activate the webcam <coughs> on your computer. And there's so much that you can do just from that. I really think that, especially with tablets, iPads, phones, sometimes in the class, the camera app is one of the most underutilized and underappreciated apps there are because it's already there kids already know how to use it it's integrated into all of these devices anyway and just to be able to take a picture as an example or take a picture of something from home or on a trip or to take a video of you explaining your thought process or your reflection on something I mean there's all of these ways that you can just do that just real simply and then if you're able to share that back with the, the teacher then then you got it and so here's some real simple ones that I like. I like um, creating a personal narrative. I'm a high school Spanish teacher. And anytime I can get my kids talking in Spanish is great. And sometimes it's just real easy to get them to talk about themselves. Because they know that topic really well, right? And so if I can just get them to tell me some of the basics sometimes and record it onto a video, that in and of itself is powerful. And then what's great about that is if the other kids are able to watch their videos, that's extra practice. You ever tried to teach something and you, you think that you've got it absolutely nailed? And then there's a kid who just totally doesn't get it. And you've explained it and re-explained it and re-explained it and you're going, I don't understand why you don't get this. And then their friend walks up and they're like, oh, well, that's easy. All you got to do is this, this, and this. And they go, oh, that makes sense. Really? <laughs> This is a perfect way to, to get at that. I mean, if you're, if you're working on a math problem and if the students kind of walk you through how did you do that math problem and you take a video of it, you have students that are struggling and you're able to show them somebody else's video. You hear it from their perspective and their own words. That can be powerful too. Telling a story, I mean, Adam Bellow's keynote this morning was kind of a good example of that. He had all these really cool little stories. Um, all kind of weaved throughout, and it made it interesting, didn't it? I mean, it was like, it was, a, it was an hour-long keynote, and it didn't feel like it was any more than a half an hour, at least to me, it didn't, because it went by so quickly. Um, stories are the same way. And then dream. I always love being able to put a what-if spin on content. And so if you give kids the opportunity to think, what if this were, what if we had all the money that we needed to spend on education, what would we do? <laughs> Or what if the school lets you use your cell phones to do whatever you want? What would it be like? Let them kind of talk through those kinds of questions and see what their answers are. And then to be able to record those on video, there are a couple of really easy ways to do it. So one, obviously, is to record the video onto your phone or onto your device and just upload it onto YouTube. Um, show of hands again real quick. How many of your <coughs> students have access to YouTube? Okay, not bad. Hands down. How many of you work below the high school level and your students have access to YouTube? That is awesome. I'm so happy to see that that's, that's moving along. It's such a powerful tool. And it's not just for watching videos either. There's a lot of creation that you can do. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. The <coughs> upload button right there. Obviously, if you take your own video, you can just upload that video. But there's a lot that you can do in addition to that. And so if you hit the upload button, this is what you get. This webcam capture actually is starting to get phased out. Um, I used to love that because 
you use this webcam capture and you just click the record <coughs> button and it will have your webcam record a video and stick it right into your YouTube channel. It was so easy. They're not using it for um, But there are still some really cool things like photo slideshow. Did you know that in YouTube, you can create a video out of a bunch of pictures? And YouTube has a great library of music that isn't copyright protected that you can use, you can use legally in your videos. So you lay some music over the top of it, put a whole bunch of photos. That's the photo slideshow. If your students have access to YouTube, you can use that. If you have access to YouTube, you can make videos like that for your, for your students too. <laughs> and then it's also got a video editor. If you go to youtube.com slash editor, you can pull in your own videos, line a bunch of video clips up and do a video montage. Throw some music over the top of it, record a voiceover over the top of it. You can do all of that. What's also nice is there are all of these video clips on YouTube that are licensed for Creative Commons. Not copyright protected. And so what that means is any of those videos that are licensed like that, you can grab them right off of YouTube. You don't even have to record the video. Grab them off of YouTube, stick them on there. So the ability to use all those videos that are already out there and remix them into something cool. <coughs> That's sort of like a big thing right now in creation is remixing. It's taking what somebody else has already created and put your, your creative spin on it. So that's a really neat way to be able to do that, is to use that, um, use that video editor. Okay. So that was YouTube. We video. If you have Chromebooks or if you have laptops, this is a really, really powerful tool. And actually, there are, there are apps for it, too. I believe they've got an iOS and an Android app. Yeah. So um, you, you can definitely use that there. I always use it with Chromebooks. It's amazing what you can do with we video web browser because you don't have to have, if you use WeVideo, WeVideo is a video editing tool. A lot of what you can do in iMovie or Windows Movie Maker or a lot of those other ones, Camtasia Studio, a lot of the, the functions of that, you can do in WeVideo out of the web browser for free. Well, for free to some extent. <laughs> There's like the free and the paid and I'll get into that in a second. So, Here's kind of what the editor looks like. Let me see if I can click on this and make it a little bigger. That's too big. <coughs> there, that's not so bad. Okay. So that's what the video editor looks like with uh, we video. So here's basically what you see. You come in here and you don't have anything. You don't have any content there. So you start using either the record button or the upload media button. You can pull in your own video clips. You've got video clips saved on your device pull in those video clips. You can pull in audio. You can actually record your own voice. You can bring in pictures, and there's actually some media available to you actually on WeVideo that you can tap into. Then, after that, what you can do with it is kind of amazing. Because you start pulling these video clips and these audio clips from up here, and you drop them into the timeline. Again, you're doing all this in the web browser, which is kind of amazing. And so this right here is a little short video clip. That's also a video clip. And this is audio of my voice. And so if I hit play here, what that means is that the, audio, the video starts here at that blue line, but then the audio starts just a little bit in there because I can tell it when to start the audio and when the audio finishes. The video plays, the next video starts, and I'm still talking over the top of it. I could lay in a music track also, or, if you've got this big whole, this great big video, and you know how on the news, you've got the talking head right here, and then you've got the little picture, the little video clip up here next to their head? You can totally do that in WeVideo. Just drop another video in here, shrink it down, move it over next to my head. Isn't that amazing? And that's all available right out of the browser. This is the more complicated, this is called the timeline version. There's a much more simple version called the storybo storyboard mode. And this one, you just grab your clips and you just put them one after the other after the other. If you've got younger kids and you don't want to get into that complicated channels and having different things happen at different times, this just lines them up. Makes it really easy. You can do neat um, transitions in between them too. So 
pretty cool stuff. Now, the free version will give you seven and a half minutes. Let me explain what I mean by this after I say it. Seven and a half minutes of export time per month. Export time is whenever you put together a video project. And let's say it's a two and a half minute video project. When you turn it into a video file, that's exporting it into like an MP4, some sort of video file. And so you, if that was two and a half minutes, that's two and a half minutes taken away from my seven and a half minutes, I have five minutes left. And what's great about this is each student, if you've got, if your students have Google accounts, each student can log in with their own Google account and get their own seven and a half minutes. Now if you need more than seven and a half minutes, that's when the premium plan kicks in. There are some features that you can't get unless you get the premium plan. So anyway, I wanted to tell you about that tool just because it makes so much possible. And if you want kids to do a simple video, remember we're up here on level one, the simple vi uh, camera videos. If you want them to just record something simple on their computer, when you hit the record button, one of the options is webcam. And so it'll actually take that webcam video of you. So, so that makes those possible if your students aren't using like tablets or cell phones or anything. So, okay, so that is simple camera videos. That's level one. Now we're ready to level up. We're gonna level up to online video tools and the first one I wanna show you is Powtoon. The nice thing about a couple of these that I've got is that they're, they're fairly simple to use. What I love about Powtoon is you can create these really cool animated videos that have text that slides in and moving characters and everything and you can create them for free. So here's my example. I'm thinking if I was an English teacher <laughs> and if you're an English teacher and you're thinking, oh, why is he introducing this like this? Remember, I'm a Spanish teacher. <laughs> but if I was an English teacher and I was getting ready to teach Romeo and Juliet, I think this would be a cool video to show at the very end of class right before we started the next day. Just a little teaser. Let me get my audio going here. Sorry about the buzz. I don't know. I think my computer is doing something weird. I'll unplug it after I get done. Here we go. class the next day <laughs> so and then you can take those videos and then they can be uploaded onto YouTube there's there's a couple of different ways that you can share off of Powtoon Powtoon is kind of like a moving PowerPoint sort of you have these slides and you have the timing of when you want things to come on the screen and when you want them to leave lots and lots of, of functions that you can do with that so I mean, for kids to be able to create explainer videos or to show the dialogue between characters, I mean, there's, there's a lot that you can do right there with, um, with Powtoon. So I wanted to show you that. And then there's also Gone Google Story Builder. This is a little free Google tool that sometimes people don't realize it exists. And so Gone Google Story Builder basically lets you create these videos where it looks like people are typing messages to each other inside of a Google document. And it's just a video. And so let me show you a couple of examples of what those like, what those are like. The buzz is back. Actually here, I don't wanna show you that one yet. I wanna show you this one first. Okay, subject change, new character, the lion. The gazelle. Isn't that great? All right, so you can see kind of how that works. You've got um, a couple characters, and then they jump in from time to time and they type. So you can have characters interact, you can have historical characters interact. I mean, the sky's sort of the limit. You get to name the characters, you get to figure out what they type. 
Now, if this one is real linear, it went from top to bottom. But if you've interacted in Google Docs with somebody else, you know that you don't just write from top to bottom. You can go in and you can change other people's text, too, right? Same thing here. This one will show you the music that you can use, too. Okay, so that's what the writer wants. Now here comes finance. So cutting things out. Open in a field, a cannon fires, and awakens a fireman. So here comes the writer. He's going to try to get the last laugh in 3D. <laughs> so. so you can create these, these videos. Your students can create these videos. You can, they can really be done in a very short amount of time. Again, you figure out who's typing. You say what they want to say or what you want them to say. And you kind of like go down the row and you can go back up and change once the text is already written. You pick the music and you're done. And then you can go share it or watch it. So pretty cool little tool there. That one's free. It's great for dialogue. It's great for history. It's great. I mean, for me as a world language teacher, it's conversation. It's, you know, it's, it's dialogue too. So there's, there's lots of neat things you can do with that too. Okay, one other online video tool is Hangouts on Air. Now, if you know about Google Hangouts, Google Hangouts are kind of like Google's version of Skype, right? Or kind of like FaceTime. Um, you do video calls. Now, a Hangout on Air is kind of like taking a video call and turning it into a broadcast. And so what I could do with a Hangout on Air is I could use my computer here with the camera and I could invite other people to join the call. So I could have a call with two or three or nine different people. And then once we hit the broadcast button, then it makes a feed of our call available to other people. Now you can set the sharing up in a couple different ways. You can make it totally public, which means that if you go out on the Hangouts on Air page, you can look at some of the Hangouts on Air and you can go jump in and view them if you want. You can get a link to your video, to your broadcast that you can share with other people. The way that I've used it in class sometimes, though, is I broadcast to nobody, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense at first, right? So I set it so that my audience is basically nobody. And then I'll start the broadcast. And I'll, although I'm not actually broadcasting to anybody, here's the great part. This is the other part about Hangouts on Air that's awesome. Once you're done, it takes your video call and it saves the video into your YouTube channel. So if you want to be able to create a video of a, a video call or just create a video running right off of your computer, that's one way that you can do it and get it into your YouTube channel real easily. So when I would broadcast to nobody, I would set a Chromebook up like right in front of my projector screen right before class starts, I'd start the broadcast. And then I'd start recording. And then I'd start teaching. And when I was done teaching, I'd stop the broadcast. And boom, my entire lesson was right into my YouTube channel. So if kids missed class, they could just go to the YouTube channel, catch up on what they missed so that they could, they could make anything up that they needed to. So that's kind of like a non-traditional use of Hangouts on Air. Now, Hangouts on Air can be a really cool thing in schools, too. I mean, if you have a play or a, I don't know if you can do this with sporting events or not, if there's any licensing with the High School Athletics Association or whatever, but um, basically anything that happens at school, if you want to invite parents or grandparents or relatives that don't live nearby to be able to see it, set up one of these broadcasts and just set it so that the audience is only the people that you share the link with and you don't have to worry about the video going out totally public. And so you share that out in a newsletter or an email or in social media or something, and then people can come and see the play or see the presentations by the students in class or, or whatever. So that's a really neat way to create video, but also to communicate, too. So why is it that whenever I lean down like this, it gets loud? You guys notice that? Maybe it's when I turn this way. Is it louder now? All right, so that's level two, online video tools. Okay, let's keep going. Because it gets cooler from here. 
All right, so the next one is screencast videos. I'm kind of like a screencast geek. <laughs> because I see so many options for how you can use screencasts in class. Um, how many of you know what I'm talking about when I say the word screencast? Okay, about half of you. So the other half of you, that's a foreign word. All right, a screencast basically takes a video of what's going on on your screen. Pretty simple idea, right? And what's also great about it is a lot of the screencast tools will use your microphone in your computer and will record your microphone also. So imagine having presentation slides up on the screen, you start recording. And so your presentation slides up here and you start talking. The microphone's recording your voice, the video's recording the slide on the screen. You flip to the next slide, you keep talking, you flip to the next slide, you keep talking, and then you're done. Boom, you have an instructional video, just like that. That's the way that a lot of people think of screencast videos. First thing that comes to mind is always, I'm gonna put my slides up there, or I'm gonna show you how to do something on your computer. So if I wanna show you how to use a website, or use PowerPoint, or use some sort of Google tool or something. A screencast will take a really good video of that. But it doesn't have to stop. So here are some, some ideas for uh, screencast tools. My absolute favorite is Snagit for Google Chrome. If you use the Google Chrome web browser, if you install Snagit, basically all you have, I don't know why I didn't put a, a clickable link in here. If you Google Snagit for Google Chrome, you're gonna find it. And so once you install it, you get a little, you see my shadow up there, the little blue S button right up there. And once you click on it, it lets you take a picture of what's on your screen. That's what the top three of them are. You can take a picture of a certain region of your screen or the entire visible area of your screen. Or it will even take a picture of everything on the screen and it'll scroll down and take the whole, the picture of the whole thing for you. That's the picture side of it. But we're talking about the screencast side of it, the video side of it. And so if I hit this button right here, it starts, it's going to start taking a video of the screen, and then I can leave it like this, and it won't record my microphone, or I can click on it, and it will record my microphone. The beauty of this tool is that once it's done, if you're a Google school, you're going to love this. If you have a Google Drive, you're going to love this. Um, your videos automatically are saved into your Google Drive. It just automatically drops them right in there. So if you want to share them with your students, if you've ever taken videos before and you're going, well, how am I going to get this to my students? How are they going to be able to watch it? With this, once it goes in your Google Drive, you just pop open that video and hit the share button, grab the link, give it to your students. That's all you want to do. So this is my favorite screencast tool. But again, I've used laptops and I've used Chromebooks. If you've got an iPad, there are a couple of really cool options. One that I know that a lot of people love is the EduCreations Interactive Whiteboard, or Explain Everything is another version of that. EduCreations is free. And that basically turns your iPad into a whiteboard. And you can start recording what's on your screen, and you can draw with your finger or with a stylus. You can put pictures onto it. There's lots of, lots of neat things that you can do with that. You can do the same thing on an iPad. OK, those are the tools. Here's what we can do with them. Number one, animation. You can create stop motion animation using slide presentations. PowerPoint, Google Slides, whatever. So what you do, you know what, let me show you an example first and I'll tell you how, to, how they did it if you can't figure it out. old, old, old version of Google Slides. This is where slide presentation is still called Google Docs. You can see it in the top left.
software, no high tech hardware, and then they're the box. Do you guys figure out how they did it? Oh, wait, this reminds me of something. Is this not the scariest scene in your entire like teaching life? <laughs> this very screen right here. You want a quick little hack so that you never see that screen again if you don't want to? Okay. If you create a Google slide presentation and put the video onto a slide, I mean, it could be like a one slide presentation, it doesn't matter. If, you put, if I put that video onto a slide and I'd start as a presentation, you know how you start presentation of full screens and you can flip through it and everything? Okay, start the presentation, play the video out of the presentation instead of out of a web browser, or out of YouTube. It doesn't show this. Because it's like during a presentation, if, if they know that somebody's up here presenting in front of a bunch of people, they're not going to suggest other videos to you. So that's a little hack. That, there are other ways that you can do it too. That's my favorite one. I think that's really easy. Create a slide presentation, put the video on a slide, start the presentation and play the video. That works. So, okay, anyway. Okay, so. Here we go. Okay, so the video. Basically what they did was they took a slide and they built a whole bunch of things on it using shapes, like squares or triangles or lines or text or whatever. And so you build it and then you duplicate that slide. All you gotta do to duplicate a slide is right click it and hit duplicate the slide. So now you've got a duplicate. You come down here to the other one, change a little something to it or a couple little somethings to it. Duplicate it again change a little bit, yeah. duplicate it, change it, duplicate it, change it. And then whenever you start flipping through the slides really quick, it goes and it looks like it's animated, just like it did right there. So if you're thinking, okay, that's cool, that would be neat to make, but how in the world does that relate to the content of my class? Well, let me show you. Um, science teacher in Philadelphia area named Chris Baker. One of his students created this. Okay. Let's see. It's probably going to take four years to get this. <laughs> okay, that was that wasn't too bad. Okay, I am not a science teacher. Okay, I am told that this is called the sodium potassium pump, and it has something to do with contracting muscles. That's all that I know. <laughs> what I'm going to show you here is a totally abstract idea to me, except I know that it represents that, and I think it's amazing. So check this out. That is a, student's cre a student created diagram of the sodium potassium pump, or at least one part of it. And you even got a legend up here talking about what the blue circles are, what the yellow circles are, what the yellow diamonds are. Now watch. All I'm going to do is I'm going to flip through those slides. Because they did the same thing. Take a slide, duplicate it, change a little. Duplicate, change a little. Duplicate, change a little. And so I'm going to flip through these slides really fast, and it's going to be like an animation. Here we go. So if you look at that, and you think, holy cow, that was 242 slides. How in the world are my students going to make 242 slides? <coughs> Is it going to take them that long to make those 242 slides? Duplicate, change, duplicate, change, duplicate, change. It doesn't take that long. And it doesn't have to be as sophisticated as this either. And think about the classroom application of this. You've got like, you could do storytelling. You could retell literature or poems or historical things. You can explain scientific phenomena. You can show how to do math problems. You can, I mean, there's just all sorts of stuff that you can do with this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. So if you want to turn this into a video, this is video projects, right? Um, you're going to hit present up here. The way that I do it, when I want to record something like this, as I say present with speaker notes. 
This is not like real intuitive. So if you present with speaker notes, it gives you, back here, it eliminates more stuff. And then all I do is I just close the speaker notes. And then I'll make the video just the region of the screen that I want it to be, and then yeah, the way that I did that one to make it flip through the slides fast enough is I was hitting the down key and the arrow key like a drum. It was like this. And that was that was what made it go faster. Because if I just hit the down key or the space key like this, it would have gone faster. And you said snag it. Yes, yes, snag it for Google Chrome. We'll do that. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. Here. Okay, so that's animation. Here's the other awesome thing that you can do with um, screencasts. Show of hands. How many of you know about Google Maps Street View? Oh, lots of you. Good. Okay. For those of you that haven't seen this before, I'm going to blow your mind. <laughs> you take the little yellow guy down here. Drag him onto the screen. By the way, don't you love how he dangles? Isn't that great? Okay. I'm going to drop him right out here outside of the resort. And boom, we are right down here on the street. Look up, look down, left and right. You can go down the street. You can go down the street the wrong way. <laughs> it's safe. Okay. So having it right out in front of the resort. No big thing, right? What if you took them to like the Eiffel Tower and stuff? So we'll use that same street view. Pick the little guy up. We can drop him right down here on the street, right next to the Eiffel Tower. You can take kids almost anywhere in the world with this. And then you can take them inside of some really cool places, too. Let me give you an example of that. If I can drop this just right. No. No. Yes. Wow. The observation deck, right? There's the same River. Isn't that awesome? So Street View usually is recorded with the Google car and the panoramic camera. They did not drive the Google car up there. <laughs> Just want you to know that. So if we're talking video projects here, how cool would it be if you can tie these maps in this panoramic imagery into your curriculum somehow, how cool would it be to present a video like this? I think of it from my perspective as a, and of course this would also work really well with social studies, with English, with um, science, if you're doing physical science, there's, there's a lot you can do here. Um, with math, if you're talking about geometry, start with this and then turn on your screencast video with the microphone on. And so with this, you can have a student saying, I'm going to be your virtual walking tour guide of Paris. Our first stop is the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower was built in this year. Yeah. It is this many meters tall. Here are some interesting facts about it. They do their homework ahead of time. And then they just narrate while this is on the screen, recording the video. And while they're talking, they might have to have a partner with this, I don't know. Have them walk around and show different things. Yes? Google Earth, there's a tour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, Okay, I've heard of that. I haven't played with it very much. That's that's the tour in Google Earth, you said. Okay, that's another awesome route for that, too. That's, that's good. Okay, so you record that, then once you're done, you can say the next stop in our tour is, and this would be perfect with, you can set up different stops in the tour, right? Yeah, that would be great for this. And then you can have them go to a different spot in Paris, and a different spot in Paris, recording the whole thing. Once it's done, it's saved right into your Google Drive. Your students have Google Classroom. You just turn it right into an assignment in Google Classroom. Go watch it. Yes? So if you were to record the screencast, would that be brought into like, the video and then do a voiceover there? Let's see. You could download the video. 
So once it's done in WeVideo, you can go into your Google Drive, download the video onto your laptop or Chromebook, and then you can upload it into WeVideo. In which case, yes, you can totally do that. Absolutely, great idea. Okay, so that's that. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you for calling me on that. I appreciate it. Okay. Let me show you one other really cool thing, and then, yeah, I'm almost out of time. I still want to hear some of your ideas real quick. Um, have you seen those videos where they record somebody furiously scribbling on a whiteboard? I thought, how cool would that be to be able to create those, right? So I have my students take an iPad, point it at the whiteboard in the front of my room, or there were a couple of empty classrooms See, I'm at a little bitty school where the enrollment is actually shrinking instead of growing. <laughs> and so we've got a couple of classrooms that aren't being used. So if they went into another classroom with a whiteboard, so we've got all these big whiteboards available to us. Aim the iPad at it, start recording. And so they, let's say that this is our screen right here. You want to be so that you can only see your arm, or at least that's the way I wanted them to do it. And they would just draw at a normal pace a scene and a story, or a scene in whatever presentation they want to present. Once they're done drawing it, they stop for a second, and then they erase it. The video's recording the whole time. Draw another scene, erase. Draw another scene, erase, and then they're done. It's important before they start doing that to have it all storyboarded out. You guys know what I mean by storyboarding? You have like little, little bitty pictures of what you're going to draw ahead of time, so you got the whole thing planned. Try to do it off the top of your head. <laughs> I know from experience. And so they record it at normal speed. Save the video. There's a couple of tools that will let you speed up your videos. One of them is YouTube Create. There's another link up at the top, and I've got instructions on how to get that up a little bit higher on this page. So you click on my channel, and then you click on Video Manager. And then from there, you can go in and you can start editing those videos. And one thing you can do is you can speed up your video. You can do it on that. You can do it on Windows Movie Maker if you've got a Windows machine. You can do it on iMovie. <coughs> speed up, I sped mine up to about four times its speed. And once you're done with that, you can either add music over the top of it if the pictures tell the story by itself, or you can narrate your voice over the top of it. And so for me, I wanted them to talk in Spanish. So the, the visuals were a story, and I wanted them to narrate over the, you know, do a, a voice recording over the top. And that's basically what it looks like. I try to do this so that it doesn't buzz. kind of poor execution. I thought that you couldn't see the top of my whiteboard and my big line at the bottom, but apparently you could. <laughs> but I had it all planned out ahead of time. I wrote it out. I'm not going in real fast. And all I do is once I got done, I brought this one into Windows Movie Maker, sped it up, put the music on top of it, put it on stuff. Yeah, Yeah, if this happens to you, then yeah, you could totally do that. This was a couple years ago when I still wasn't quite there yet, but yes, that would definitely work. So, okay, so we got, we're we're just about down to the end here. I wanted to know, and let me go ahead and say if you want to get off to your two two o'clock session. That's everything that I've got. I've got copies of my book if you're interested in it and t-shirts. I also have these free little Ditch That Textbook stickers. If you want a free Ditch That Textbook sticker, you have to be brave and come all the way up here and get it. <laughs> okay, but if you want to go ahead and get off to your two o'clock session, that's fine. Um, if anybody has any video project ideas, if you can raise your hand, I'd love to hear them. So other than that, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Okay, so does anybody have any projects that they wanted to share? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then they can, like, say, okay, do you want to go to this? Right. Yeah.
that's an awesome idea. That's such a cool idea. Are they just going to record it, or are they going to just like talk? Oh, okay.